y'all. Welcome to another episode of OD Podcast. This is episode number 96. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> and so you remember last episode, well. and last episode, we asked people to like give us some ideas on what they want us to do for uh, our 100th episode. We got some feedback, but I need y'all to, you know, wrap it up, you know, a little bit, give us some more ideas. But um, what, did they, <laughs> what, did you, what did you get? Just some topic suggestions, which is good, but um, I don't mean honestly, I don't know what else we could do besides talk about you know whatever's going on at the time. I just feel like it's a causation for celebration. We could have a Ugh. virtual um, we should have a party, we should have a um, Zoom party, yeah, maybe like a game. Um, there's this podcast I listen to called the Black Millennial Marriage Podcast, and they um, they have game nights on Zoom for their Patreon, and I think that's oh, so man. cool. I know that'll be cool. I tried to have one with my cousins recently, and it was not my. You can't get an act right. I need to do it with strangers because my relatives don't know how to. Act. <laughs> but you try to have a game night. Hmm? You try to have a game night on there. I did because me and my everybody in my family is being very um very responsible with um COVID. So we were like, you know, let's just get on Zoom. So we started with like a Q and A, and then we played like Never Have I Ever. Then mm. it was just too much noise. I mean, I was just like, all right. <laughs> Yeah, you can't do that with black family. Hey, oh. Unfortunately. It was like, who is that? It just was all, I'm like, all right, y'all. Nice to see y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but y'all, if you hear a third voice, it's because we have a guest this week. Um, right. Do you, like, is your moniker J. Nicole? Or is, do you prefer Nicole? I prefer Nicole. See, the J is like my government name. Say less. And I be talking real crazy, so we just gonna go with Nicole. Okay. <laughs> so we are joined by Nicole. Nicole and I actually met at my last non uh, professional job. I mean, it was professional, but it wasn't like a job I got after college. So uh, mm-hmm. when you met me, girl, I was, it's so funny now looking back at how much has changed, but I was just like, yeah. man. I don't grab, got my degree this many years ago. I'm trying to find a job in my field. She's just like, you know, stay patient. I don't did this, this. And I'm like, dang, you know, I did all this stuff and looking at me over here <laughs> selling devices, selling computers and stuff. But um, <laughs> shortly after I met you, I ended up going to California, doing an internship. And then things just changed dramatically. Yeah. So it's just, yeah. it's just funny when you can look back and look at growth and things that have happened and you were complaining about it, but you don't even know it was like, coming in the future so mm-hmm. you know the trajectory you made some moves since then but um we're gonna get into all of that or whatever uh so first <laughs> things first we're gonna get into shop talk what you got i mean honestly the only thing on my radar is this election stuff mm. um by the yeah, time election the come out, costumes. huh the election and halloween costumes you know me i have to bring up um the controversy Mm. Well, what's, I don't know which one's more controversial. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, um, with, yeah, exactly. What's, what's, what was controversial about the costumes? Okay, so, you know, um, I think one of the bigger, biggest shockers um, of, of celebrity costumes was Lil Nas X, of course. Mm, yeah. yeah. And it has opened up a can of worms. Once again, just, I don't know. Um, we... I feel like we have this same conversation every week about homophobia, whatever, in the hip hop community, and it's just getting worse and worse by the second. So, um, um, so many think pieces about him um, dressing up as Nicki Minaj, like fully, and then 50 Cent, of course, is chiming in with his stupidity. And, oh. I, I think of social media, I'm just, I exit him out my memory. I can't. Yeah, he does the most. And me and him are just the same worst. Age. Like y'all, y'all got the same birthday? Me, him, and George Bush. I'm like, really? <sighs> so are you problematic? Right. <laughs> That's why I don't use my first name. <laughs> see what I'm saying? But see, I know Makes my sense. lane. I know my lane. Makes sense. So wait, are you a Sagittarius? I am a cancer. Oh, really? 50 mm-hmm. Cent is a cancer? Why are you giving me Gemini vibes? Oh, he's a mess. Oh, wow. He gave me can- he he gave me cancer vibe. He's very emotional. Yeah, but <clears throat> I just don't understand what um what the big deal is. I mean, realistically, we've had two artists within this year to do the same thing that are heterosexual. Um, we had Jay Bunny. Jay, this is his name. Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. I'm sorry, I get him and Jay Balvin mixed up. Bad Bunny and Lil Yachty. Lil Yachty dressed up as Oprah for his video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and J Balvin. I mean, dang. Bad Bunny, I'm sorry. He dressed up as a girl in his video as well. His his girlfriend 
came out and just said she was comfortable with it because I mean he didn't do he's she he's being himself. You yeah, know? he's entertaining. So I don't know. It's just always something weird when it when it pertains to black gay men. I don't know what it is. Like a straight dude can sit there and make jokes and dress up as a woman and and it's funny and it's you know. They Quincy Brown it. was Frida Kahlo. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, that's Same. interesting. I it's really I mean it is sad. You're right, and I don't see and not on top of that, it's literally Halloween. Like, yeah. <laughs> like if you know, not that it makes it better that it's that people can kind of dress as they please, but it's like of all days to make this even a case. It's like y'all chose a holiday where people can be roaches, crickets, <laughs> fairies. <laughs> it can be whatever they want to be. Yeah, it was annoying. Um, but I did. I I really enjoy Halloween. I love to see celebrities get up and people in general. Like I like to see people. Um just get creative I, I honestly wish I can do that all the time I don't know if you remember a long time ago I think I was like 22 I had a birthday party my birthday is in May and I had a costume party for my birthday yes I did the photos for that birthday party you sure did I forgot for a guy so yeah like I, I really enjoy Halloween that's really my favorite holiday just because I love to see people get creative and step outside the boxes I feel like it's a moment where you, you know, you can let go. A lot of people are very conservative or whatever the case may be. And this is just one day where you can just literally be anything and anybody who you want. So yeah. it's fine, you know? Um, I think that the best one that I've seen, though, uh, let me see. Um, Sierra actually did really good. She was too many costumes, though. She was cheap. She was a lot. She pulled a Beyonce. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to see. I, I didn't even get to see Heidi Klum. She she normally has like the best one every year, but yeah, her and still usually go ham. Yeah, I would say, um, doing? pretty V. Oh, and... the weekend. I'm sorry, the oh. weekend one. Oh, the weekend he won. Yeah, he was Sherman Clump. He did a really good job. Yes, wow. he literally looks, he looked just like him. Like, you couldn't tell the crazy. difference. No, <laughs> the thing is, I used to follow the, the um FX artist that did his uh prosthetics. I used to follow him. I used to want to do that shit so bad, but it's too much. I can't. It's a lot. <laughs> Oh, but I'm sure the check was the checks was coming in for holidays. I mean Halloween. Oh, I really yeah. like that um offset and pretty V were um the mask, Jim Carrey's mask. They that did a, was that was really impressive. Damn. I you know I I've never ever put person. effort. I've only dressed up for Halloween one time and I was little red riding hood. <laughs> that was like you was, Monet. You was Janelle Monet one time. Oh I was That's a cute costume. Mm -hmm. I was Janelle Monet. Yeah. You know what's funny? There was another girl who was her that night. And it was funny because I didn't think people knew her. I mean, she was popular, but she wasn't like famous yet. So mm. I'm like, Yeah. And mm -hmm. anyway. But no, we took a picture together. I'll never know who she is either. Maybe I'll put an amber alert out. <laughs> oh my God. Um, did you did uh did did oh I tried to so okay, obviously I know there's COVID and things like that, but I really love giving out candy. For the kids mm -hmm. on Halloween, and I really felt the way this year because I'm like, dang, like, what if there still are trick or treaters? Like, maybe I should still like safely make snack bags and things like that for the kids. I did. I made like 20 bags, y'all. How many kids came to my door? Zero. Nah. <laughs> really? I feel like you. I feel like that be happening to you a lot because that happened. Well, like, no. Last year, I think it's my neighborhood because there are no kids in my neighborhood. There are some, mm -hmm. but not enough for them to be trick or treating. And I just didn't know. And I wanted to, you know, I I love to make kids laugh and be, have fun. But anyway, my last the uh, this time last year, I lived in a neighborhood that had a lot of kids, and I had so much fun just giving out candy. But I just should have read the room. Like Alicia, nobody's yeah. coming to get candy. My clients said they did um um. Drive through, drive through, trick or treat. treat. That's yeah. cute. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, they didn't um, do that out here, honey. They were just yeah. like, "Oh, this is another night. We're gonna go to sleep." That's fine. Oh. I gave some candy to my neighbor, so yeah, I I, I enjoyed my um Halloween. I I got back to Atlanta on Halloween. Um, I went to Party City for like two hours, found me a Batman costume, and it was it was, it, you know. I was I was a homebody for Halloween. Seems seems pretty consistent with the other days of the year for me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't went out on Halloween in like four years. I just don't be caring. I'm not gonna lie yeah. to you. I'm a granny. So, to, so this weekend, I definitely enjoyed myself. I went out. I went to two events. Um, they were not following COVID guidelines. Let me just be clear. They weren't. Um, however, Shocker. yeah. Um, <laughs> the first party was a little bit safer. Um, it was no, nah, I'm lying. I ain't even gonna put them out there. But yeah, I went to two different events this past weekend. Um, 
Um, so now, it, what's today, Monday? I'm mm-hmm. going to go get a COVID test on Wednesday. I got one on Friday. I'm going to get another one on Wednesday, just to make sure. Hey, <clears throat> well, I hope you, I hope it, things work in your favor. Um, so, <laughs> aside from Halloween, um, if you listen to this, this means that we have already had the election and we're going to hope Damn. that there have not been any riots, mm. any violence, mm. and any kind of weirdness that would cause anybody from not wanting to go outside mm. in a perfect Damn. world. <laughs> um, I am gr- I'm glad that I voted early because I just don't even know what to imagine what could have happened yesterday. Me speaking as, <laughs> as if it's one yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it's just, it's, this was the, f- I mean, I've only voted so many times because um, my first time voting was when Obama ran. That was my, I turned 18 that year. And um, I just, it's just crazy to me that I've been seeing posts that people are asking, like, do you have a safety plan for tomorrow? It's just, I'm just like, wow, is it, is it that, is it going to be like that? And businesses are boarding up the windows and the doors. I, I'm really shocked. I didn't think it would be like that. I think it's just because of um, the way that this year has gone. Like, the riots have really been a big thing of 2020. Like, we've always experienced that every every now and again, you know. But I think this year, it was really bad. Like, people targeted really big businesses, and a lot of businesses had, like, hella losses yeah. because of that. And then it was more than one city. Usually, it'll be in one city. It was definitely, like, all around the world. America when George Floyd <laughs> Um, died. Mm-hmm. That was like the whole America. So I think now, knowing that a lot of people, uh, we have a, a large amount of Trump supporters, and there's a possibility that he may win. Um, yeah, man, I think that they just... This Even the way his, his supporters have been treated, like if they see like Biden supporters in traffic, it's just so much. And that is scary. I don't like the idea of thinking that somebody could make me feel unsafe because their president didn't win. Yeah. Kind of crazy. I've accepted whatever happens, happens. Like, I I have to do what I need to be successful in my life and safe. And I don't want the president to be the, to feel like the president is the reason why I can't throw. I don't know. It's just a lot. I don't know. I agree with you on that. I mean, I can only hope for the best, but if things, I mean, it's a possibility that it won't go our way. It is possible. So, I mean, you have to really learn how to cope and get through life. I mean, otherwise, what are you going to do? Just sit there and complain about it every day? Because if he wins, that is four years. In 2016, yeah. you never thought we'll see 2020. Yeah. I mean, but, but honestly, though, this is his presidency has been, like, the worst. But, I mean, we're still alive. We so are. Good. We, we are. are. Quarter million are. people not. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. We just got to. I didn't so, think I should uh, be scared. But it's now so like weird to even talk about i've never been this stressed out about the election i don't and, and i mean realistically this is like what our second time voting for real third third what? obama had two terms okay i don't think i was did i vote the first time i hope so oh well sorry um so i'm all off and put my phone on do not disturb there we go so um yeah, this is our third time voting. I don't know. I never. I don't remember us being distressed. I do remember how horrible it was, like during the time when Bush was in office. But it seemed like Trump done Trump over Bush, baby. Trump is Trump. <laughs> <laughs> we thought Trump it up, is you know, Trump. worse than Bush, and here we are. I know. I remember people was like, people was feeling like Bush was the worst president we've ever had. And granted, he's, you know, he, for good reason, but I don't, and to think Trump might not even be the worst that we've seen. That's crazy to even think about, but I think it's all relative to what's happening right now. Cause it's easy to forget sometimes things that happened five, 10 years ago. People might say that about, you know, Nixon or other presidents, you know, but we're yeah. in, right now, we don't want to feel like this. At least I know I don't, but yeah i think with obama it was he just it just was something about him that made people feel like they had hope and safety maybe some kind of security but with trump it's like you literally can't guess what he gonna do what his people gonna do etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh, enough about that i suppose um <laughs> so uh oh next so uh, i'm sorry um we were talking about uh for tweets from the streets we were gonna talk about what's the model's name again i'm so sorry what's her name was it Tabria Majors? Yeah, Tabria Majors did a tribute to Beyonce, and she did such a great job. I mean, I literally was like... She snapped. She did that. Snapped. She ate that. She ate? Let like, me tell you something. No it made me emotional. Did, oh, 
<laughs> am I tripping or some of the locations were the exact same location? It looked like she had the set and everything. The warehouse was definitely, she definitely was on the Deja Vu. Crazy in Love. Yeah, the, Not the, Deja Vu, but um, crazy, crazy the video Crazy in Love? love? Yeah, that was the same one. And in the walkway, it looked like the same one. She um I read her caption for the video and she did work with somebody who worked with Beyonce before. So it's possible. But I just think she did such a great job. Like that was she didn't miss. And I love the end, how she kind of incorporated the choreography into all the scenes. It was just very, very well executed. Yeah. I could never. <laughs> when I say I have the most reckless neighbors, like they just I feel like everybody has a Hellcat now and they be Hellcat. <laughs> it's like, why is it so loud? <laughs> I, I bet they only go into Target. <laughs> why do you have to do that? Mm. Yeah, that's how they sound just for making the right turn, honey. When I, when I hear those cars, I'm like, let me just pull over like it's an ambulance coming because I don't oh. know where they at. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, y'all. Um, so let's get into the causation for the celebration. I don't know why I keep saying that. I swear I'm Jesse Jackson. But uh, so <laughs> with this week's guest, I thought it was really helpful to bring her on because uh, she has a podcast of her own and I'll let her talk about it. But she talked to me. She talks about a lot of things that are relevant with just navigating life as a professional, even if you don't work in the same field or even like a corporate field. I think a lot of the things that you talk about on your show are relevant to anybody. Like me and Draco, we have two completely different career paths, but there's so many gems that are dropped that I think are relevant you know from networking and knowing how to like you know use your resources and things like that and I think you know you might have some things that our audience may want to hear we have a lot of people that are young professionals in college right now maybe have lost a job and kind of need hope on how to find a job or things they could do to sharpen their skills and you know let's just bridge the gap you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. um, so first things first tell the people who you are a little background on what you do and where you're from all right, so I'm Nicole Dove. Hey, everybody. And Hi. I am host of the Urban Girl Corporate World podcast, where we talk about being a boss and getting a bag. Um, outside of that, I'm a director of information security at Warner Media. I'm also a video game voiceover artist and a professional speaker. I'm originally really? from Newark, New Jersey. So Whoa. some accent come out. And I am a proud graduate of the Clark Atlanta University. Period. We love to to see it. Hold on, you might oh, be wait. that girl that dressed up as Janelle Monae because she wants a clock in Atlanta too. <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> That's the only thing I remember, remember that. that she wants a clock. <laughs> How do you even remember this stuff? I'll be like, what the heck? You <laughs> said you're a video oh, wait, game can, can, voiceover can, artist? Yeah, I'm, I was about to go back to that. You said you a video. You do video game voiceovers. Yeah, so I do. Are you able to talk about which games that you've done? Yeah, so I did Grand Theft Auto episodes from Liberty City and then The Ballad of Gay Tony. How what? do you do that? <laughs> yeah. Listen, right place, right time. I was working for Rockstar. They needed some extra voices on a game. And I was like, y'all going to pay me? They were like, no. I was like, well, can I get my name in the credits? They were like, yeah. And I was like, bet, run it. So, oh my God. Are. That is crazy. so cool. You yeah. know what? I so only crazy? know. Hmm? No, I was, I was about to say something. You, the crazy thing about it is most major things like that. Um, you don't get paid for. I, I'm just now realizing that you don't get money for that. Yeah, sometimes you gotta um, give a little for free, right? Yeah. But I bet now if I walk into another situation and I'm like, well, I done did such and such, then, then we can talk the bag. Yep. Period. Mm. We want our bag extra large, okay? <laughs> but um, I only know one other person that's a voiceover artist, and I don't even really know her, but she's a, a, a podcaster as well. Her name is Medina on the um, Cocktails podcast, and she does, like, commercials and things like that. And I, my college, I went to Clayton State, and they have voiceover classes on um. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm just like, oh, I just never even thought about it as something to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was dope. I actually I wanted to do it before just for like a cartoon, like especially for something like Proud Family where they are urban. Yeah. Like Proud Family yeah. or I just wanna um, I wanna do ads and I wanna be like, yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Y'all know they have me in there doing all the hood voices too, right? <laughs> oh my god. Get back fool. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was like arguing with people. I was like a waitress. I was somebody online at the club trying to get in. I was like, oh, y'all gonna get all this black girl magic too. Yeah, <laughs> let's do I've it. I've been like, period. period. What's up? <laughs> all that. All that. 
So one thing that I really like about you, Nicole, even from all over the, over the uh, few years that I've known you, like you really, like even looking at you now, you have blue hair, you got a mohawk, you have a really vibrant personality. And I think that, at least for me, before I got a role in corporate America, I just envisioned it being this uptight environment where I got to be cookie cutter, have a certain look, talk a certain way. But when I see you, I'm like, dang, she's like at the top. She's been herself. She, I mean, obviously you, you're very professional as well, but you still showcase your personality. And mm-hmm. I, um, I struggled with that a little bit because I didn't really know what the expectations were for me. I was, oh my mm-hmm. God. When I, um, it's funny now when I look back on my first because my first, I don't even want to say real position, it's kind of like condescending, but the first position that made me feel like, wow, I'm working in my field, I mm-hmm. was really quiet. I was trying to peep the scene a little bit. I was dressing up to the T every day, just, you know, mm-hmm. trying to make that look. And I, didn't, I just didn't know how to move. And I came from Apple, which is, even in the corporate environment, is a very free environment. Mm-hmm. Not too many ca- um, company campuses are like that. So I'm like, well, if I come in there acting like, I got a banjo at my cubicle with my dog. They might ask me to leave. Yeah. I just wanted to know, like, were you always that way? Or is that something that you had to, like, grow to, you know, not peep the scene, but just adapt to your environment? And how, like, how did that really become important to you? Or was it more so, like, they just don't get what I give them? Yeah, so it was definitely a journey, right? Because, like I said, I'm from Newark. And then I went to an all-Black college where you just see Black excellence all day. And then my first job, after college was on Wall Street. Oh, wow. So I didn't know what to expect, but I definitely felt like the need to conform. Mm -hmm. And it was really, really stuffy. So like I would go to work every day, button up shirt, you know, pencil skirt, heels. And this was, I graduated college in 2004. So things were a lot different than they are now. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was definitely like way too tight. I was like, this is not for me. Um, (laughs) So I did. Yeah, I was like, "Mm -mm, that ain't gonna work. (laughs) So I went to another company and it was exactly the same. And um, that's when I actually first got the Mohawk. And let me tell y'all, it caused so much drama and controversy it was really? crazy. And now, remember, I'm straight out of Newark, straight from an HBCU. So if you say something to me about my hair, <laughs> you're going to catch it, boo-boo. It's curtains. Listen. <laughs> listen. It all, listen. Night-night. Because I went ham, and it was bad. Like, they used to call HR on me, and I did not care. So after a couple of years, I was like, yeah, this probably isn't the right spot, which is actually why I ended up going over to Rockstar because I was like a different environment. Mm-hmm. It's real laid back. Like I learned how to play beer pong at work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, it was oh, cool. when and I then, worked for Apple, we they were not we because I don't drink. They would take shots in the VP's office. Like, oh, it's I'm not even going to tell you what I saw people doing in the bathroom. <laughs> ah, we'll put two and two together. Okay, <laughs> I ain't gonna talk about that. Mm-hmm. But it was cool because that was like the first place where I really saw like, I'm not the only one with a mohawk. I'm not the only one with blue hair. I'm not the only person with tattoos showing and nobody's asking me or giving me drama about it. So for me, it was really about figuring out like, I have to be me. I have to show up as me. It's just more so figuring out the place that's going to allow me to do that. Mm-hmm. So I have no interest in like going somewhere and having to like change my hair for an interview. Some people may, cause you know, you may have a short term goal. You want to get the bag. You need to do that, whatever. I'm not going to sit here and say wall street wasn't great for my career. Right. But at the same time, we're not doing that. Anymore. The only person I know that worked on wall street was the lender for my house. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's impressive <laughs> and for you to be a black woman. I think, um, yeah, I was, I, I always dreamed of working in an environment where I could still be professional, but truly be myself. And I think it did, yeah. it does rely heavily on who you work for. Cause I mean, like, I'm pretty sure, I mean, maybe not now in this administration, but uh, like you can't <laughs> listen to trap music at the White House. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, right. Maybe if you work for like Heineken or, you know, some kind of company that kind of is in a turn up, I guess you could say kind of environment, you can be a little bit more flexible. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that's kind of adjusting nowadays. Though, yeah, yeah, right? well, way more modern. Uh, yeah, like, you know, now we're having this conversation. People aren't afraid to say black at work no more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like this yeah. year while this they at home. Yeah. <laughs> and like now I'm at the point, like when people ask me what I did this weekend, 
I'm going to tell you what I did this weekend. And I know yes. it probably is nothing like what you did, but you're going to hear it. And now people are curious. Now people are interested. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you know, black culture, we influence everything. Everything. Yeah, for sure. We start everything. So they, they want to be down anyway. Just go and get them a little tease. Or, so know. for me, of course, because my uh, field of choice of work, career field is different from y'all's because y'all are definitely more corporate than I am. But I will say that in the beginning of my career, it definitely was some similarities, like how you were saying, um, you know, you had to kind of Mm-hmm. ease into your look you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so for me um me and alicia started working together when we were what 16 17 yeah i was flag. 17 and so i've always been a very expressive person like i've always expressed mm-hmm. myself through my looks my tattoos my mm-hmm. hair like i've always been into like different stuff like that so from that moment when i worked at six flags at, at 18 when i cut my hair and i wanted designs and a mohawk mm-hmm. i used to get suspended from work and get fired from jobs just because i wanted to be myself and they and honestly, were very strict you couldn't i mean you couldn't even have unnatural hair colors meaning black girls with blonde hair like look just yeah. stuff like that it was they were very strict no visible tattoos the <clears> socks <throat> had to be a certain style and i wonder how it is today because they i mean people oh, get fired for having listen i go to six flags now they have earrings boys can wear earrings tattoos showing you couldn't have dreads you couldn't have nothing yeah. Your, wow. your hair couldn't be, if you was a boy, your hair couldn't be past your collar. Like, now, mind you, Nicole, we were high schoolers. We don't, we, yes. why are we being held to this kind of standard? We, not even, we don't even That's have meals. Nobody should be held to that kind of standard. Like, At I all. have friends who, for religious purposes, don't cut or show their hair. Yeah. Right? Like, that's kind of lightweight illegal they were yeah, no nonsense. they were really strict so i mean from that moment i knew that just working in an environment like that was just not gonna be for me because mm-hmm. i'm I, in my head i'm like shoot i ain't even really gotten into being an adult yet and i know that when i get older i'm gonna want to do something i want to change my look i want to just be mm-hmm. expressive and so i think that the misconception is that since i'm an artist that I could just look however I want to look and do whatever I want to do, which is mm-hmm. just true, which is true. Like I'm able to, um, you know, showcase my personal style and just mm-hmm. how I want to look. But I will say in the beginning of my career, it was really hard because being in Atlanta, Atlanta is, is like, um, especially at that time, it wasn't as diverse. More it was just people, it wasn't even necessarily conservative, but it was just that people who looked different, it was like a freak show. And it was like pushed, it was just ostracized. It wasn't like New York or even LA or a city like that where you see people that look different all the time. This right. is a city where everybody looks alike, look yeah. the same. And so when you see somebody outside of the norm, it's kind of like in a bad way. Like they look inside and like, ew, like you worship the devil. You have a nose yeah. ring here, right here. You have gauges in your ear, tattoos everywhere. It's like, what do you do? So also me being young, entering the beauty industry, I was 21, 22 when I first started doing makeup. And I'm next to people who are 35, 32 and up, and they've been in the field for a long time. So of course they're looking at me like, oh, if you want to work on this set or do this type of work, you need to look this certain way. You need to wear all black all the time. You need to look like this. You need to look clean cut. Nobody's going to want to work with you. Even down to the way that I talk, like my my jargon and my lingo, they were just very, very judgmental. Mm-hmm. And I think that um I had people told me they couldn't understand what I said. I was speaking clear English. Yeah, like they, they were they used to just really and, and, and it made me feel like I had to like clean it up. And I, I remember at one point I'm like, fuck you. I'm gonna do what the fuck I wanna do. Like this is just what I'm gonna do, you know what I'm saying? So I mean it did cause a lot of drama like people used to put me on blog sites like media takeout and stuff because i wanted to express myself through makeup just being creative you know what i'm saying yeah. they would just take that and like ill like what the fuck is he doing and fast forward to today we have beauty influencers men on revlon ads and all this other stuff mm-hmm. and it pisses me off at first it did make me mad because it's like damn i let these people really scare me out of doing what i wanted to do mm-hmm. look who we are now like everybody is very expressive especially as an artist like i don't have to wear all black when i go to when i go to work these days i don't have to do that i can literally dress and look how i want to look 
I can talk how I want to talk because people are obsessed with Southern culture, Southern accents, and just mm -hmm. what we got going on. <clears throat> so it's different. I really appreciate, you know, that we're able to do that, but it does piss me off because I feel like I was you already doing it. A lot. Yeah. I yeah. think all that comes with a already... cost. Yeah. yeah. Somebody got to lay the groundwork for it, to, for it to work for somebody else. Yeah, you're right. You are definitely right about that. Yeah. Mm. Well, um, I know... I can only, well, first of all, I can only imagine, you know, Nicole being in your predicament, like you going to Wall Street, you probably the only person like you at your job. So you, like, have you ever felt like alone? Did you ever have friends that were like you? And, or how did you even find the people that you hung around at work to even, you know, feel comfortable? Yeah. So I will say <laughs> on Wall Street, I actually found there was only one other black girl on the whole floor. Mm. Mm. So I just walked by her desk, saw her name. I'm a big introvert. Like, I'm not, mm -mm. And I just sent her an email. And then we just became, like, like, fast friends. But, you know, the thing is, it's like, what I feel, like, for finding your people, it's, it's, it's different layers. Like, it's levels to it, right? Yes. So it's just like, it's people you rock with, and then it's like people you fox with. At yeah. work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So it's just like, you know, the people you rock with, that's just like, oh, you know, you speak to, you chat them up, you may go to lunch. That's like your social circle. Yep. Um, and what I find is you would think it's people who look like you, but it's you actually, when you just talk to people, you really find out that you have more in common with people than you don't, than you have. I had to learn that. Right? Yeah. Like that was a big thing for me because I was just like, none of y'all grew up how I grew up. You don't understand me. Operate on a different set of principles, mm -hmm. like no snitching. Y'all be snitching. <laughs> <laughs> visibly, visibly. All right in your face, like, right? And, 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 you know, and they act different. They'll be mad at each other and blast each other, and then be friends like the next day. We don't do that. Yeah, we don't do that. It's cricket. If if oh, I'm, you wanted a report, report right? Oh, okay. Say, Cardi said forever. forever. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like. I have a couple rules. So like if this people like I'm really trying to find like who I really fox with, like one, like I like to win. So I only want to be around other people who win in two. So <laughs> I like to figure out like who are the people that are celebrated, that are accomplished, like, and who are the people that already have what I want, right? So whether it's a promotion, you got a leadership role, you got an award, or you did a career change, like whatever. Um, and I try to like work with different people to figure out like who those people are. And it's not always like the most senior person. It could just be like somebody at a lesser level than me, same level than me. Um, another thing I learned though, is when you reach out to people, or like when you try to connect with people, sometimes people don't want to connect with you. Yep. And it's real yeah. awkward. It's very awkward because I get offended. Like, I've been there. Like, what you mean, young one? Like, what? like, come on, we black. Come on. <laughs> right. I, I felt that. I have been caught off guard. Right. I'm just like, oh, oh all right. Yeah. Um, yeah that, that happens to me a lot. Because mm -hmm. you deal with the industry folks, they be having different personalities. They funny. Yeah, and yeah they like, funny. Real, like, especially working in the industry, like me, I come off as like very homeboyish, like when I meet people and I, cause I want to, I want you to feel comfortable right. and not everybody is receptive of that. Like sometimes people be like, you know what, you cool, blah, blah, blah. But then I do that to some people and they're like, what do you do? Like that, that's how they'll come off to me like that. And so, um, social media is big in my field. So of mm -hmm. course people are paying attention to social media, but what I, what people fail to realize is that I know some makeup artists and hairstylists who do some of the biggest jobs, biggest, highest paying jobs, and they don't have blue checks and a lot of okay. followers on Instagram. That doesn't make you as an artist. Agreed. But when people, when people treat me like that and they ask me for my Instagram, I gladly give it to them. I'm like, Ooh. yeah, you can have it. <laughs> and Shut I, me Ooh. out. <laughs> so when they get it, so when they look on there, they're like, oh, I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... That's Five I minutes did. ago, when you was being stank and looking at me sideways, now you now you into it, and I'm not following you back. Yeah. <laughs> but that's when they start going on a liking spree, like all your pictures. So you can I'm not following you back. Oh, that's it. It is what it is. So 
I, it's been times that I've been on a flight and they'll be like, oh, so what do you do? And I'm like, is it because I'm sitting up here in the front or yeah. are you just trying to make conversation? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't and know. I start, and I, I take I, out my computer and start working from the plane. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very, very funny acting about, I mean, funny with like making friends in my field too, just because, um, people try to steal your clients. I mean, but realistically with me, I make friends with my clients. So, um, not real life friends, but I just make a relationship between us so that way we're comfortable. If mm-hmm. you feel like you need to veer off and go to somebody else, we're okay still. Like, don't, yeah. don't, don't ever feel like we're beefing because you went to somebody else. I don't, I don't give that. So, I listen to conversations like I, it's such a catty ass industry. And I'm like, you know what? It's so many people in Atlanta, especially this is like the Mecca for industry shit, especially in the black community. You know what I'm saying? All you need is a good one or two clients. that's going to keep you in rotation in order to be, you can't do everybody. You can't get, there's no way. Unless it's Michelle Obama. Yeah, I mean, it's something like I'm just saying, like you're not no, you're you. not able to you just Michelle from me. We be we we fighting. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I I don't know. Like I just be feeling like people just really are weird. So I find myself mostly connecting with artists who are either newer artists or um low key. People. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's so weird, and I, and I I always have to watch myself because I don't want it to ever come off as me being like um predatory yeah like i'm just (laughs) trying to like pray over that stuff but realistically i just connect with people like that because i'm still as hungry as i was when i first started and i don't ever want to grow out of that so i would rather be around people that are hard working and um very uplifting opposed to me being around people and they're like oh you seen what so-and-so did da 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 Mm. you know what I'm saying I don't want I don't want to have conversations like that like I want to have conversations where you like all right look I found a new way to market outside of Instagram I've seen a new product that I want to that I want to push or that I want to make or curate or whatever the case may be I want to do start doing these type of classes maybe you can help me out you do have a bigger following than me so maybe we can collab make some money Market, what's mm-hmm. so hard about that? Because people be scared they're gonna lose their spot, I guess. I mean, I've been in situations like that at work where we might be, um, like people might get recognition for a project and somebody might feel like, dang, but I did help her get this, this, and that for that project. Now they want to do other stuff to outdo you. I'm just like, listen, if you're trying to go for the same position, one of us gonna get it. So just do what you yeah. gotta do, and I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Yeah. I don't know. Speaking of we which, all got the same twenty four hours in a day. Like okay, you know. okay, Beyonce got the same twenty four hours as us. So what's mm-hmm. your excuse? Period. Um. So um, Nicole, I feel like um, and actually, me and Drake have talked about this too. Like people who like you know growing in your field and trying to find like some people who are really stagnant. Sometimes they're comfortable with that, or sometimes they're not comfortable, but they are not realizing why they haven't been able to make the growth that they've been looking for. And I and I remember um, I, I don't know if it was your last episode. I think it was the one before that, but you, I, it was something along the terms of you know showing up and doing the job is not enough. Like you need to stand out because and I, I try when, I, when my little cousin were well, um, recent grads I was trying to tell them like you know yes you do meet the qualifications for this job but what else because most people who apply probably did as well so you can't take a person they don't pick you they might have had some kind of edge over you so what do you think is is successful to be like a standout candidate or just employee or team player in general yeah I so I totally agree like doing the job is never enough right I don't know where that sense of entitlement comes from like well I'm doing my job so now I should grow it's like you can train a monkey to do a job, right? It's about so much more than that. I think for me, the biggest things that have helped me, and I will say once I really unlocked this, like things just really started popping for me because it took me six years to get my first promotion. And then it took me another four years to get the next one. And then over the next five years, six years I got four promotions oh wow it was like when it popped it popped the first thing is you got to work smarter and harder you can't just do one you got to do both because if you work smart somebody's going to work harder than you you work hard somebody's going to work smarter than you another thing that people don't take advantage of is you always need to under promise and over deliver Mm. everybody can meet a deadline but you're going to look different and better and like a boss if so anytime my boss asks me for something, I'm like, oh, I'll have it for you by Friday. Please believe she's getting it Wednesday, yep, Thursday at the latest, right? Mm-hmm. It just develops a reputation. And then to toggle back 
what we were just talking about, the biggest key for me has been two things, building relationships and being known for solving problems. Because what I learned is that people do business with their friends. People do business with who they like. Just like Draco said, right? I'm going to talk to somebody who's about their business, who want to level up, who we can leverage each other's platform and push each other forward. That's what a lot of business leaders want too, right? It's all the same. Um, and then problem solving. Like, again, people just want to do the job. Like, you need to think beyond that because any successful business is solving a problem, right? And so many people will, will come with a problem, but only people who really are leaders and innovators really come up with solutions. So if you could work smarter and harder, build relationships with the right people, under promise, over deliver, and solve problems, that's what's going to move you forward. It has nothing to do with what's on your job description because they can hire anybody to do that. Literally anybody and teach them the job that you qualify for. Yes. Yeah. I I had to learn that. I think I was, um, I had, I had a, I had a sense of entitlement because of the company I worked for and how mm-hmm. like relationships I had with previous, like even CEOs. And so I'm thinking mm-hmm. like, Oh, when they hear that, they're going to want it. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be <laughs> like, now what does that do for me? But I had right. to learn, um, you know, to not only do my job so for example in my um, in my first professional role i i started learning the roles of the team that we supported and the greater mm-hmm. or so now i know their managers i know the jobs that they do and even if i did it once or saw them do it once now i know about it so i'm going to use that right. as like my bragging rights if i interview again or if i have any kind of meeting or anything of that nature but i had to you know i just had to learn like it's this is not i'm not a cashier anymore i'm you know i am running a business a global business right. you know i have a contribution in, in the success of it so i need to make people proud and i want people to be able to leave something to me and when it's time for a business review or something in the nation they're like oh i can't wait to hear what alicia gonna say because i know right no guy, you know <laughs> right but i had went through a a, a a a series of interviews and i'm just like man we had such a good time. It was such a good conversation. I've done this before, but it was just like, yeah, but this person took a stretch project and it actually helped us before we even had the position being open. So it was just, you know, just realizing that it's just, you have to be competitive. So what is you your do. And those stretch assignments are, I'm so happy you brought that up. They are really, really the plug. Yeah, no, really. Right? <laughs> That's working smarter and harder and finding other problems that need to be solved. I actually, a stretch assignment was actually how I got um, my second promotion. We were opening a new office, the last company I was working for in Romania. And the way we were doing training, it was just taking like way too long. So I went to my boss and I was just like, you need to send me to Romania and I'm going to do this. And we're going to train people faster, get them on the floor faster, get our software implemented faster, make our revenue faster. She was like, write that up, wrote a whole proposal. And they said, yes, they sent me out there and I did it. And a month after I came back, I got a promotion. Oh, I wow. definitely don't think that would have happened had I not went to her and, and, and oh, solved yeah. for that problem. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've been, so the company I work for now, they are a little bit behind on technology, but I leverage like some platforms and some, app, um, some applications that I use at a previous company to be like, have you guys thought about like, for example, to just give a brief summary, when we do um, project meetings, like timelines, we are literally screen sharing an Excel sheet. Now I've right. I've used smart sheets. I mean, there are just so many other things that are that can yeah. automate something like that. And we don't even have to have this meeting. We use a smart sheet because it's gonna have those alerts right. on there. And so I had to do the same thing, write up a proposal. We also have a, a support team that just takes requests through emails. Those emails sometimes go unanswered because they didn't can keep up with on, it. <laughs> Present a Zendesk to them and let them know. Now you not only can you keep up with these tickets, but now you can see the type of requests you get because of tags. Right. And it's just and now that can let you know, do you need more headcount? how do you propose more headcount off of emails you know what i mean mm-hmm. so now i'm like all right now when it's time for uh Listen. <laughs> but just things like that and i think that you know i mean they might to me it was common sense to have something like this but to them they probably never even heard of it so i think like you're right like those just doing something that is outside of your like if treat it like it's your business what would you like right. to be done better then do it don't complain about it come up with a solution for it right think like an owner the same things that work in entrepreneurship work in the corporate space yes, and it's absolutely. really going to set you apart because most people in a corporate environment are not thinking like that 
Yep, you're right. I always, even the way I shop as a consumer, I think as a business owner, I'm like, like so, so, so today, this is so, this is probably don't even make sense to y'all, but I, so I did an online, a drive up pickup for Target for some trash bags, right? Okay. And so, um, you know, you just go, you drive up, you, they bring it to your car. So I actually needed to go inside of Target to pick up something else, but you know, it just made sense to go inside to get it instead of place another order. So I was actually going to buy the trash bags and cancel the online order, but I was like, how much labor went into them picking my order? Mm-hmm. How much space is my order taking up? You know, and then my, somebody might be like, girl, you overdoing it. But I was like, you know what? Let me go back to my car and have them bring it out because that's what my, my order was assigned to. And I was just asking myself, like, Alicia, you know, everything is not always like that, but, but it really is. It's like, if this was your business, like when I think, when I did some research on um, how returns negatively impact a company's reg- revenue, mm-hmm. billions of dollars sometimes off oh, of somebody yeah. returning stuff. And it just made me think about the things that go into it, manufacturing a product, selling it, reshelving it, maybe it has to get destroyed because mm-hmm. you returned it. So I just try to be a little careful, look careful. I still return a lot of stuff, but no, I just try to be more mindful. Don't I know it. <laughs> but not intentionally, <laughs> but, um, but it does make me think about it. And I start to feel a little guilty sometimes. I'm like, Alicia, you probably should have just done, like sometimes I'll buy two, two different sizes of the same product to make sure. But maybe I should have just went to the store and tried it on. And maybe mm-hmm. I won't know. So just little things like that. Now, sometimes I make myself a little proud when I think, I'm like, you know what, Alicia? I'm proud of you. Don't worry. They, they account for all that. Especially they do, but I still be having a little store. guilt. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Uh, I feel that. I, I think like that too, especially when I get clients that are late. Um, just because I feel like you you don't even know what you just did to me. Set back everything. <laughs> like today. You know what I'm saying? Like I had mm-hmm. I had a plan. I had a list in my phone and I'm becoming more organized by the day because I'm just not an organized person by nature. So I'm becoming more organized in my life. So I'm like, girl, <clears throat> literally squeezed you in. I said be here at twelve, not two. Mm. But I think two. Yeah, it's it's because it's one of my friends, and she, you know how they go. She was like, oh, no, because I, I respect your time. time, but everybody don't think like that. <laughs> and see, for me, um, me not being an organized person, I definitely leave my house late a lot. Like, I mean, for appointments, dentist appointments, barber appointments, stuff like that. But just seeing mm-hmm. it on my end when people mess up my day um, by coming late. You know what I'm saying? You pushing my other clients back. And now I, I, I can specifically remember that I had clients show up late and I ruined this girl's birthday. Well, that's what she told me. Mm. She was like, dang, you know, you were so late. I was late to my dinner. Da, 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 da. But I'm me being me, I took off half of her service. I'm like, I'll still do it for you, but I'll just cut it off, you know, because I was late. That was my fault. I just got to eat it up. But, um, and I need my money. So I'm not, listen, let's do, let's, let's, Man, let's. I would have felt so bad. Yeah, I felt really I bad. So upset. But um, yeah. I, so now that I be on time and I just be, you know, making sure that I'm, I got my shit together. When people be late, I give them hell. <laughs> I give them hell. I um, the other day I had a hair appointment. First of all, these braids were not supposed to be in my head. I was supposed to be locked by now. I told mm-hmm. myself I was gonna move into this apartment. The first week I was gonna lock my hair. Made an appointment. Got to the appointment. 20 minutes early, she was late. This girl, this girl had me waiting. Keep in mind, I had to catch a flight that same day. So I had to get, I was going to get my hair done, go do somebody's makeup, go to the airport. Literally, that was the order. And this girl was an hour and a half late to the appointment. I had to leave. So I told her, I'm like, honestly, you're going to make me miss my flight. Like, I just gave her that whole spill. I just ended up kind of like going off. And I was pissed because... I have been DMing her about the damn appointment for like two weeks just because we had just started following each other. And I'm like, girl, I, every time she posts somebody's hair, I'm like, oh my God, the hair looks so fucking good. I can't wait to my appointment. Hey. And she was like, yes, your appointment Thursday at 3.30, right? I just seen it on my books. And I was like, yeah. She was like, you need to make me an appointment for you. We can just barter services. Mm-hmm. Da, da, da. You know, having conversations. And then you do that. Now I'm pissed. Now I still want to go to her, so I'm still going to go. So if you're listening to this, I'm still coming. <laughs> But I just want to let you know, you know, that kind of like really inconvenienced me a little bit, a lot of it. I feel like I've had, I've been to so many hairstyles that have been late. They want to charge us late fees. I'm charging them late fees. Yeah. I don't, I don't spend seven hours in a hair salon before. I can't. Literally. I don't do that. I know, I know how to do my own hair now. Mm-mm. Um. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, something that, um, that I have 
had a good, I feel like I've, I feel like in my career in general, in most jobs I've ever had, I've always been really good with establishing a positive relationship with leadership. Like even my last company, when I left, I loved that company. I did not love my job. I had a really, really, really good relationship with my VP, my director, like even to the point where they gave me their blessing. They was like, listen, you should leave and come back in this amount of time. It was a lot of things. It was like, I needed some more money, number one. So, you know, leave, come back. Blah, blah. But they were just telling me like, you know, I think you'll do very well. This, you know, just things that people shouldn't say when they're losing. And a, a good person mm-hmm. too, too. but um for me, <laughs> my question for you is um like what are are there tips how, how can you what is the right way to build a relationship with a manager like what are the boundaries that should be uh respected per se yeah so i feel like to earn your boss you gotta learn your boss right so it's just like the first thing is understanding do you even want a relationship with them because they're like some people like they're just some bosses it's just like I don't. Unbearable. And I'm not saying don't connect with them on any level, but you know how to, you know, not get too close. Or peep just, the scene. Or just, yeah, peep <laughs> the scene. And then, I don't know if this is a, y'all tell me, is this like a black person thing that we get from our mamas and them, but there's like this very notion of like, I'll make friends at work. I'll come to work. Oh, here. I'm not like that. Okay. Yes, um, I- I definitely feel like we got that from my parents. My mama was definitely that person. Yeah. But my mama also had a lot of, because she was just so welcoming. She had a lot of friends that were. See, I feel like I walked in like that. Um, and it probably was just because of like a lot of the bad experiences I had on the front end. But like my career didn't take off until I started like building relationships at work. So it's like, you have to understand what kind of person your boss is and just talk to people. Like when you just talk to people, you learn so much about them. Like I have, um, like now my old bosses are like on my podcast. Like I know their kids. I go out with them on their boats on the weekends. They write me recommendations. They send me speaking opportunities. Like again, people want to do business with their friends. But what I really find interesting is that they're just regular people who are used to people treating them differently. Yes. Right? I agree. So it's just like, if you just treat them like normal people, um, I think they appreciate that and you stand out a little bit more. Um, but what I find about leaders is that they're super smart, they think fast, and typically they are usually right and they are short on time. So I think all of that collectively, if you just are just mindful of how much time you take up with them, have something to say that's relevant and valid. Don't be like the teacher's pet, like, oh, yeah. for the weekend I was studying those Excel charts. No, don't. <laughs> On <do> an it. <laughs> apple? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But one thing I think they also appreciate is that typically when you're dealing with a boss or a leader, most people around them want something from them. Like this is somebody who's going to help me do this or help me get promoted or I have a problem. Can you help me solve, solve it? But back to finding solutions for problems, when you bring your boss something, like that's a gem. And when you give somebody something before asking them for something, it's going to make it hard for them to say no. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jim Dropper J. <laughs> I, 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 I I've, I've experienced that in life too. Um, um, I definitely am not the type of person that's try to give like teach this pet just because I first of all, my, I my emotions on face. I can't fake it. I can't fake shit. Me too. So that's that's just one of you know that's one of the things. But just my experience in my work field, I just you know whatever. But I worked at Mac for five years. And I, when I got that job, I just thought it was like just my dream job because in my head at the time, that's just what it was. Those were the top artists. They were so clean cut. They were so professional. They were so themselves. Like when you walk in a mat counter, you, you, everybody was so different. Mm-hmm. And I just love that about it. But I noticed that um, my bosses, uh, some of them I did want to kind of get get close to some of them I knew like they're just mm-hmm. <laughs> let me just make my uh my goal for today right mm-hmm. <laughs> get out your way but um mm-hmm. but yeah I, I even just check they, check their temperature because I think that for me I just have high ex- expectations for myself just because I know I'm always on my shit you know what I'm saying period so I've tried to like come in like 
a year into it and like, okay, um, can I get a, another position now? Like I'm ready for <laughs> this. And they're like, um, th- one of my bosses told me, she said, are you, do you don't live in Georgia, do you? I do. You do? Mm-hmm. Okay. So she was like, um, keep in mind, I'm working at Lenox at the Bloomdale's counter. She was like, okay. when I asked her, she was like, hmm, you think you want to work at like Stonecrest or Cumberland? <laughs> and I looked at her. I was like, "Okay, all right." So I see what we're going with this, right? But she ended up eating those words. So now she just be on my ass, like she just be on my ass. But I, I literally just keep her. I make sure, like I don't work for the company no more. She lives in DC, but every time she congratulates me or you know just trying to have a conversation, I make sure that I bring up the fact that she is this. <laughs> Tried to call me a hood. You right. petty. <laughs> I'm like, you remember that one time? I'm like, I give it to her just like that. I'm like, you remember that one time? Ooh. And see, mm. my assistant manager at that time, she was the one who was rooting for me because she was like, honestly, you're the hardest working pe- person at this damn counter. You make sure you do your goal. You bring in more people, mm-hmm. whether it's media or just coming to work and just reeling people over here. We we have a daily goal. We get in trouble if we don't. We get written mm-hmm. up for that, you know? Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> so I just don't understand why they treat you like that. But see, now we do weddings together. It's like mm-hmm. she does, she no longer works for the company. So we do weddings together. We do um, a lot of different projects together. Like we, we still locked in, but I, st- I still, I don't know. I had a boss say something shady to me. So when I was in college here in Atlanta, I went to Clark Atlanta. I already said that, but I was working at the Victoria's Secret in Lennox Mall. Okay. And at the end of the school year, um, I, I had said something to somebody like, oh, I'm moving to New York. I got a job on Wall Street. And my boss was like, mm, I'm shocked at that. And it was like, I'm well, like, well, you're going to be you shocked don't... while you're folding these drawers. Listen, okay. <laughs> I, told, I told her, I was like, well, you know, I exceed expectations for a living. Like corporate shade is like, okay, that is a necessary muscle that has to be built because these people be trying you. <laughs> That's crazy. That's why, and, and it's so bad because in my head, I'm like, I don't want to walk into this situation. Mm-hmm. And people just automatically judging me, thinking that I'm that I'm just ghetto and I can't, I'm not capable of doing this. Because I think for me, um, um, they'll automatically assume that I only know how to do like urban black girls. Mm-hmm. Makeup, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, check out my portfolio. I don't just have an Instagram. I have a okay. portfolio online that I pay for. Period. monthly that I've been paying for for years and I'm able to do any you can sit anybody in my chair and I can and I can take care of it I'm very um fluent on my verbiage I'm very fluent on my knowledge of product mm-hmm. knowledge of different skin types different skincare but looking at me you may not get that vibe and I understand that because you know I'm from the west side I'm from Atlanta you know I get it you know what I'm Man, even though that doesn't mean anything, but I understand like why people would think that because they're like, you know, oh, whatever. But honestly, that's not that's no that's not a good reason. It's unfortunate that it's like that because I feel it's like not... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say when people I have literally had someone come to me, I swear to God, y'all, and told me that they did not like me when I started the job because I was ghetto. They said, you know, we didn't like you because you was ghetto. I swear to God. And I right, I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? Oh, I swear a black girl told hair. me that. Uh, yeah, that happened to me too at Mac. A girl told me that and, and it was because she was one of those like earthy type girls. She was very earthy. She told me that she said. She said, I've just heard so much about you through the company. I just didn't really see it. Cause I'm like, who is this guy and why are they giving him so much? And he's That's just- their insecurity. It is, it's pure ignorance. I've learned to use that to my advantage, right? Yes. Because it's easy to exceed your expectations when you underestimate me. Yes. Right? So I, um, I take pride in that too. Like, you know, people, oh, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Newark. Sure did. They look a little scared. Yeah, Newark. And, right. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm right here in this same room with you. Boom. Right? I got here for a reason. Exactly. So um, I don't necessarily feel obligated to because their ignorance is not my issue. But a lot of times I do take a lot of pride in showing people that people who are from where I'm from 
um, have every right to be in the same space as you and many times doing better than you. Hmm. Period. So, that's yeah. why I rep um, a lot of people that I've worked with, especially in my last company, went to all the big name colleges. I rub Clayton State so hard. I'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, hold on now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mighty baby. Mm-hmm. Return of results, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that part. Yeah. Okay, so um, my next question is, uh, so this, was, this is actually relevant to like when I first met you. Like, do you have tips for people who are trying to enter their field? Like what, what can, what can be helpful for me? I didn't know what type of job, okay, like I have, okay, I have a business degree. So what mm-hmm. do I do? Do I just go to a business? Like what kind of positions are there? I don't even know. Right. So this is, I think this is just like, it's something so many people experience, right? Like there was a girl who I went to college with who knew from the gate, she was going to be a lawyer. And guess what? She is general counsel today. But then you have people that's, I think that's an exception to the rule because I graduated high school at 16, college at 20. How do I know anything about what I want to do? You know what I mean? I have absolutely no reference. The first thing I recommend is getting a gang of internships while you are in school. That was my first mistake. Paid and unpaid. If you are a business student, like Alicia and I, I would work with organizations like MLT, um, SEO in roads that place students in business school and pay internships with fortune 500 companies. Mm. So that's a good way to like, kind of learn and vibe. I feel like an internship is like the ultimate interview, the company of you and you of the company. So when I graduated college, um, like when I went to wall street, I took an internship because I was like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And I'm happy I did. Cause that, that really, that really wasn't for me. And I actually encourage students when you graduate college to take an internship. Now, if you're looking for a little bit more stability, which I get, especially in this environment, I say, again, take it back to what problem do you want to solve? Because that's what it all boils down to, right? And then I would just talk to people who are already in that field to get a sense of like what the experience is like and find a job with a lot of learning potential. Like your first job does not have to be your dream job. It's just going to be the job that's going to set you up for whatever's next. I think that everybody with a business degree should do some sort of consulting Mm. because it's just so broad it's just so wide like after wall street i went to pwc and i just did consulting over like a gang of different industries and then the other thing is practice your story right like you have to know your why like all the interviews now are behavioral so it's not like can you take this and do this with it it's more about tell me about yourself right so do you have your elevator pitch Do you have a professional story? And if you don't, you're not going to get access to opportunities because you're always interviewing. Like your LinkedIn feed is an interview, right? Mm -hmm. Like I tell my cousins this all the time. I treat my LinkedIn like my Instagram. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also do want to say I'm hosting a free event in partnership with Clark Atlanta University on November 11th. Okay. Beyond the Elevator Pitch, Power Your Professional Story. And if folks want to register, it is completely free. You can go to letsworkletswin.com to register. I'll but the information. Yeah, nothing, anything else what I said matters if you don't have your story locked down. You use it for networking, interviewing, everything. So yeah, it, 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 I would say take an internship if you can. If you're looking for more stability, figure, f- talk to people who are already doing it. Find a job and you can learn a lot and have your story locked down. Facts. I agree. One of my biggest regrets in college is not taking an internship. I was, cause um, I had bills, unfortunately, but I didn't, I all, I just assumed that all internships were unpaid. And so I never mm-hmm. even bothered to confirm that. I just knew mm-hmm. that in my mind. Mm-hmm. And so, and I didn't get a job in my field until I got an internship when I was working for Apple. And after that, I mean, my career skyrocketed, just something mm-hmm. so simple. And it, it really, it changed everything. It yeah. just, it taught me right away what I was doing wrong the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't, mm-hmm. I can't, I mean, Yes, you can go into corporate America from retail, but you got to know something about something. And thank God my internship was as a, it was as a, ch- a program manager, which is pretty mm. t- high level. You know, it's it re- is. you really get oversight on how the business is being run. And it just, oh my God, mm. I, I, 
when people who my friends who still work for Apple and they're trying to, and they, they were in a situation I was in, I'm like, please, please apply for this. Like, listen, mm-hmm. it changed my life. Aside yeah. from allowing me to live out of state and just so many other financial benefits, aside from that, like I would still be working at the Apple store. <laughs> That's how it is. Yeah, it you know, is. A, a lot of students go get a regular job for the summer, right? And yep. think about it. Now, when you graduate, you're competing with people who had internships intern. every year. They have relevant industry experience. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just well, knew. Mac was my intern. What? Well, yeah. Uh, true. Period. Yeah, it really was, though, because you I started out. Yeah, I, I freelanced before I worked at Mac, and then I knew that it was more that I needed to know. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was my intern. I went to Mac. I was interning there for five years, and then I left. I grew some wings and flew out that motherfucker. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> man! I'm telling you that that changed. It changed my life. It was literally life. I mean, I don't know how much you remember Nicole, but I remember like, girl, listen. I know. I, we connected on LinkedIn. I'm so glad we did because now it's just, I am too. It's and I I used to meet so many people at the Apple Store. And I would I literally like the way I met you is how I treated all. It was no, nothing was like fake or forced, but yeah. I would talk to them the same kind of way. And I would see them random places now, and then I'll tell them what's going on. And I was like, I knew it. I'm just like, but I ain't know it. I was like, yeah, I got yeah. I got bills to pay, love. I'm trying to buy. I know house. that's right. I yeah. know that's right. So my um, I have two more questions. And I make I guess I can make them a two part question. So my first question is. Is your can your salary ask disqualify you from getting a job? And do you feel that MBAs hold weight? So let's talk the numbers first. So my salary ask is not going to disqualify me for any role because I'm not interviewing for no job that don't pay what I weigh. Period. 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 Right. So. I have a rule and I think most professionals do like before I even start interviewing with the company, I want to know what the salary range is. I'm, I'm now, queen glass door. Yeah. 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 And glass door. And I will say, so like I just stepped into a new role, the research I did online, like nothing um, was correct. Again, this is why it's important to build relationships with people who are in the industry, right? We were just talking about mm-hmm. when you're trying to find a job. Um, typically I ask this question during the HR phone screen. Don't go to an interview with a person you're going to be working for and ask them how much you're going to get. Oh, oh God. Please don't do that. (laughs) Have you ever seen that meme? It was like nobody, black people on the first day. How much was your first check? I'm like, like, what job was that? Because I wish somebody I work with do make what I make. Okay, listen. So yeah, I I just feel like it's important to have an understanding of what the range is for that role in the industry and then what the company is willing to pay. Cause if the company ain't willing to pay, what's the point? You're right. You are absolutely the right. Point? It's what's more like a wish list at that point. Exactly. So definitely I say, like you said, do a little online research, talk to people who are already doing it to give you a range. And when it comes to salary negotiations, let them say the first number. Yeah, I really hate when I interview for a job and they ask me how much I want because I don't even know enough about the role to confirm that that's what I want anyway. I always say a competitive offer. Yeah, I'm gonna start saying that. You're right. I literally, so when I was changing jobs this summer, um, I literally got all the way to the final round with Amazon and they kept trying to get me to say a number. And I was just like, no, won't y'all just say the number first? Exactly. Mm. Because we know that y'all are gonna say, no, you're going to go with whatever I say, and you know that's going to be low. So, mm-mm. Period. Right. right. So I'm like, no, tell me what you can do or what you feel I'm worth. Because you get what you negotiate. Not, not what you were. Oh, my God. I had to. Let me tell you, the reason why I'm even with another company right now is because mm-hmm. I didn't know. I was so happy to even be out of the work environment I was in. And to be, mm-hmm. I granted, I was making, my first offer was a lot more than I was making, but it was not enough for that job. And mm-hmm. so I was mm-hmm. grateful. I, I let gratitude be my reason for taking a low ball. But it just, once I got into the company, it was so hard to get more money. Mm-hmm. Even to the point, like um, certain companies, I'm, I don't know how many are like this, but when you get promoted, there's a cap for how much you can get. And if you want oh, more, listen. yeah, I have that's to why it's important to negotiate a great offer from the door because yeah. every year corporations are only giving you what max 5% of a raise. And I ain't never got five. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, yeah. It's usually like around two and a half, yep. two, three. And that's pennies on a dollar. Literally. Oh my God. It'll cover your insurance <laughs> premium. 
Yeah. Barely. Seriously, yes. Yeah. So I had to learn the art of leaving and coming back, but I shouldn't have to do that. But you know, I learned, like I said, I was just so happy. And I it was still a great opportunity, but my life changed and I had bills. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is really what no, listen, that's how it is. At my last company, I made good money. I made mm-hmm. good money. But what I realized was I had been there for eight years. And remember, I had gotten four promotions. Mm. So you talking about, to your point, capped jumps. Mm-hmm. And then I moved from operations into tech, which is a premium. Yeah. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Your earning potential ended a couple of rolls ago. <laughs> what, a, what, what, no, what, a, can we, can we, let's talk, let's talk this through. Yeah. And I had that conversation numerous times. It was all enhanced performance. Okay. Guess what? Come back in three months. My performance is popping. Here are my numbers. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Oh, you know, it's so crazy to me that it's like that. You know what? Be like that. Because I'm going to go over here <laughs> I'm and talk you. to them. Yeah. And and it's so funny because, um, you know, I wasn't no slouch, right? Like, no one is a high performer. Y'all not sending just anybody to Romania. No, yeah. Right. I'm not doing that. Yeah, no. And um, I had actually networked and met somebody who was at the same role as my boss. And um, when we were talking about opportunities and salaries, she literally laughed when I told her how much I made. Oh, I would have been, I would have been punching the air. I was like, I would have took the plane myself and flew back. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? That was all the confirmation I needed. And when I got my new role, um, I definitely did. What they, the initial offer was fantastic, but always negotiate yes even if it's just five thousand more dollars just get every little period listen and you can negotiate anything vacation time off working from home like it's not just all dollars yep but um when i came back and i gave them my notice i'll never get hr was like oh i wish you would have told me we could have done something and i said well let me tell you what they did and she was like Oh, yeah, we couldn't have did that. It, exactly. And you know what? I don't want to have to go and get an offer from somebody else. To present. To present to you. That's what I did. And then, and now you, now you want to holler? Yeah. Like, no, if you value me, it wouldn't have even taken all this. Yeah. You know so if I would have stayed at my last company, I would have to, had to take a, a lateral role, which is now three different roles on the same level to get a little bit more, then get promoted to get the cap that will put me where I felt like I wanted. And mm-hmm. so I got this offer from this other company and I took it to my director um, at the time who was who I reported to. And um, yeah, I just was very transparent. And we, we had a good relationship. So it, I wasn't, I didn't feel weird about it, but you know, I was like, look, this is what they're offering me. He was like, there's no way I can give you that. I can maybe give you half, like half of a right. book. Mm-hmm. By love. <laughs> Right. It was, it's, it's been real. Yeah. And it's it sucked, but I'm just like, I'm, I, I'm, I feel like, I mean, obviously I am young and I'm still really early in my career to where I get to not hop around, but I can still experiment and not, I always, my issue is I always have loyalty to the companies. I just love, I just get so, oh, oh about do it that. I'm having fun. Guess what? They done hire somebody, All half right. of what they paying you to do what you was doing. Exactly. Or somebody that's done, that's smart and then got hit and came in negotiating for yeah. what you should be in any way. Let me tell you something. What I was making is in bad. And that's why I had to find my tribe so we could talk about what we were making so mm-hmm. I can understand. Because, yeah. you know, I obviously don't want to just go around telling people what you make. But when I found out it was even $7,000 more than I was getting, and they would, I'm like, hold, now I'm mad. Now I'm at work punching the keyboard. Because I don't want to y'all. 7000 Girl, please. This sounds like a another zero, honey. Because, Ooh. girl. And see, I'm like, these are college grads who, who this is their first job. I'm in my thirties. Like what, what, excuse me, but not, not 70. Oh, Jesus. I, Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Bye y'all. <laughs> <laughs> right. I guess to go. That's but my the, time. You know, and, and here's the thing to remember too, cause I get like the, the loyalty and community. Cause that's very important. But the reality is, it's not the company that you're going to miss. It's the people, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And if those relationships are valid, they will continue when you leave. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like You're I'm right still in it. contact with a lot of people. I have like a monthly touch point with one of my peers. All probably like 80% of my guests from this season on the podcast all come from my last company. Like you have great connections. I'm like, dang, I'm working the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I get really lucky. No, for real. But you know, I think also, obviously you have a lot of work experience. And so that it just comes with that. And like you said, keeping up with people, because I'm sure your very first coworkers are doing things way different from what they were doing on, you know, in that year. Mm-hmm. But um, so my, my, my question, um, I know we, I mentioned it in the last one, but to give yeah. a little background, I considered getting my MBA while we were um, at home. So I can take like, do like a work from home, I mean, not work from a remote program, mm-hmm. but I, number one, I hate school, hate it, don't want to do it. And I have come across so many like executives who just have a bachelor's and I don't want that to be the bar, but I'm starting to, I even had a manager straight up tell me that she's turned down candidates because she doesn't like students with MBAs because they have high expectations. So I'm just curious to know, what, I swear I'm not. I know and it's discouraging it's like well why would I want to get one why would you want to work for somebody like that exactly oh I don't work in the morning okay <laughs> uh, but I, what, what is your um, opinion on like I mean obviously higher education is not frowned upon but what do you th- what do you think the value it holds like in within growing in your career so I think it's a different a few different things to consider when you're talking about an MBA right so I even thought about getting one at one point and a a few things I considered. The first thing is the cost of an MBA because we, this is not, this is not cheap. Yeah. At all. At all. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have to balance that cost with the ROI. So if you get this MBA, when you graduate, what new opportunities are going to be available to you immediately? Mm -hmm. Right. Or is your ROI going to come down the line? And if you're going to be taking off of work to pursue your MBA, you've also got to factor in the salary that you're sacrificing. Mm -hmm. On top of that, the amount of time, like how much time is it going to take you to finish the program full time versus part time? Like that's a lot. Yeah. Um, when I started, to- I started talking to a lot of people who had MBAs to understand like why they wanted to get one. Um, one of the most common responses I got was access to the alumni network. Yep. Back to relationships, right? So mm-hmm. if you're thinking about a program, you know how vast is that alumni network and how successful are those people and then again going back to your story like what's your next what's your why so is that mba critical for what you want to do so there are like certain consulting firms that won't recruit unless you come from whatever type of school with an mba so like i'm in tech now right would an mba be ideal for me compared to other paths Mm, i don't know that's questionable but at the same time the last company i was at pretty much like 75% of the C-suite, so CEO, CFO, C that O, C whatever O, had MBAs from Harvard. Mm. But like, who has 100 racks sitting around? Right. right? And then you also have that to on think the about, yeah, and then you also have to think about adding that debt to whatever so you have debt. and working through to pay that off. So I think it's really like a cost benefit analysis. Mm. Quite naturally, I mean, I'm always learning. I'm always studying. I'm always in programs, getting certifications, things like that. But again, that's a lot less investment financially and time-wise. Um, but I think when it comes to the decision of an MBA, you really have to weigh all those factors and play the long game. I agree. And that's what, you know, you saying that makes me, I have so many friends who went straight to grad school before they got a job. And I was just curious to know, how did that help them? Because you don't even have any experience, but you mastered this program. (laughs) Yeah, most, most um, business schools won't even take you into their graduate degree programs if you don't have experience. Yeah. Well, my school was just happy to get some enrollment. (laughs) (laughs) But no, they like how to stay on. Right, right. No, you're right though. It's it is what um my um my company actually does do really great. They give like fifteen thousand a year for tuition reimbursement, which most companies I work for give like five. But mm-hmm. you know, I always been told, even my VPs, like don't get a cheap MBA. So that fifteen thousand might put a little dent, but 
make sure it's worth it. And I don't even know what mine would be in. I just, you know, I felt like it gave me a little status by having comma MBA by my name, but I didn't, I don't really have a passion in a field enough yet. I'm still mm -hmm. trying different stuff, honestly. See, if you want a comma and some letters, get a certification. True, true, true. <laughs> Because my company paid for my study materials, they paid for my testing exam, and then they pay the registration or renewal fee every year. Oh, wow. Okay. So it ain't going to be comma LOL. It's going to be comma... Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, 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 okay. Dang. Ooh. Those were all of my questions. Yeah. Thank you. I, mean, I, ain't know oh, nothing about, I don't know nothing about no MBA, <laughs> FBLA, um... <laughs> CEO, you know, <laughs> an MBA is a master's of business administration. It's just, I mean, master's. I know what it is. I'm just saying, I don't, you know, I, so I just, really, I don't either. And my bachelor's been doing me well. I ain't too far off from my goal for my age. We don't need no, we don't need no MBA for uh, makeup brushes. You either on Vogue <laughs> or you're not. <laughs> Very good. I hate school so much. Oh my goodness! But I, you know, it is what, it, and I think it all varies. Like, like you said, it's just what are you going to be doing, and why are you doing it? And honey, mm -hmm. I just think, you know, in my mind, I'm like, well, that's what you're supposed to do, but maybe not. Mm. I don't have any more questions for you, Nicole. What, um, so can you, I know we talked about the well, what, what, what do you have a um? like a, a, a long-term plan for your podcast or is it more so just like a resource for navigating life because this definitely helped me navigate well I'm glad that you find it helpful um the podcast was really just to propel get more speaking engagements just to be completely honest right <laughs> that's fine so it was just like because every time you know as a as a as a professional speaker you speak when people have events right and then your audience growth is limited to who's in that room. So for me, it was more about how can I get my message unfiltered to other groups of people? Because like my first speaking engagement was at Yale University. Yale is not going to let me record and share. You understand what I'm saying? With yeah. The, right? Because that's their content that they paid for. Um, so the podcast is really about like, how can I get my message to more people and not have a middleman between me and my audience? And um, I decided to just do it. I, I reached out to you. You helped me a lot with figuring yeah. out. Thank you. And it's so funny because uh, I think when I reached out, I was like, I don't know if she remember me, but let me just say happy um, birthday. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, but that's what it was about. And I wasn't originally going to do it by myself, but I was like, I actually know pretty dope people. You do. And I'm just, I'm not going to talk about what I don't know. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm really just talking about like, it's really everything I wish I knew when I was getting HR calls on me and cussing people out. <laughs> I <laughs> love your about. podcast. <laughs> I, I mean, the conversations being had. So I, when me growing up, growing up in the hood, you know, I don't really, I didn't know a lot of professionals, not any black ones anyway, and not any that I could just talk to and have candid conversations. So it wasn't until I got in corporate America and I started finding people like me, but I think mm -hmm. your, your, I mean, honestly, genuinely, I, when I, even the first episode, I'm like, this is, even when you, I think you were talking to your uncle or was it your grandfather? My granddaddy. Just, yes. Yeah. I like when he was like, you're going to do what? Do -do 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 -do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so but it's there's so many good and it makes it, it kind of reaffirms with me like okay you are doing the right thing and this is what you should be doing mm -hmm. these are the things to expect and i feel like the, the yes. type of people you've interviewed like i wouldn't have ever if i met them i might be more intimidated by them versus realize like the common things that we have between each other right so i think it's great even if it's to get more speaking engagement you are helping the people for sure. I'm happy. I'm really happy. It's really just about, I just, I just like winning and I know everybody who, who doesn't like to win. Exactly. And, I'm a winner. Um, win the yeah, chicken dinner, baby. Win. That part. <laughs> well, I'm going to put the information for your um, podcast in the episode notes, as well as the okay. Instagram and all those good things. But I do highly, highly advise, even if you're not quote unquote in corporate America, it's still a really good podcast for just navigating work. Yeah, we I talk to politicians, entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, creatives. We touch on everybody and everything. You know, oh. um, this is gonna sound crazy, but I didn't I because of your podcast, I learned about the uh the secondhand watch industry. <laughs> Ma'am. I didn't know do it, honey. <laughs> I had no idea. I was like, oh, so I shouldn't get a brand new Rolex. I should get one that's already been. You say less. Not. I mm -mm. I'm telling you. 
I'm a student, man. I'm a student in the game of urban girl life. <laughs> that's, that's right, honey. <laughs> All right. Where do uh, where can people find you? So you can find me on Instagram at Urban Girl Corporate World. And if you're interested in listening to my podcast or registering for my events, you can go to Let's Work Let's Win dot com. I love it. Fire, a black queen, baby. <laughs> but no, yeah. thank you so much. I really do appreciate. It. I had fun. Yeah, I did too. I really enjoyed talking to you both. Obviously, at least I talk to you every damn week, every day. But Barely, <laughs> I did girl, learn a lot from you though, because phone. honestly, when Alicia brought me the topic in my head, I'm like, girl, I don't know what I'm gonna be talking about in this thing because I don't I can't relate to that. But honestly, I really did learn a lot. Um, it's so crazy to see how corporate America and just entrepreneurship are one and the same. You know what I'm saying? I think that initially when I always um just think about them, I always see two different lifestyles and it's just like i can't really relate to this and they can't really relate to what i got going on but in actuality we really do go through a lot of the same things so it's you know it's very helpful very fun yeah you know (laughs) black people we all the same all across the board ain't it Mm -hmm. hey we're not monolithic but we definitely got flavors (laughs) but all right y'all that was the oh hold up you got a black business you want to share Oh, I do have a black business I want to share. So there is a company called K Piano Academy and they are essentially, they used to be an after school program that taught music lessons, but now they have gone virtual and they're doing virtual piano lessons for Mm. students, for elementary school students. So I know, you know, the kids are at home, mama's working at home, daddy's working at home. It's just a lot to just keep everything together as long as you have internet and a little keyboard they're actually doing like a special where they're giving out some free uh piano lessons and kids who take music theory also test higher in math and science so i also learned uh, that on your podcast mm -hmm. my nephew takes piano class and he is literally brilliant he really is same Wow, yes, that's okay. Hard. No, that's exciting. So I'll also put that information in the episode notes. That look at all these this uh full circle moment. I learned yeah. I'm not even kidding, I learned it on your show. <laughs> mm-hmm. They were a guest. There we go. That explains a lot. I grew I growing up I'm not really elementary. Well, yeah, elementary school, middle school, and high school. I was in um band and orchestra, and honestly, science and math were the ones that I um yeah. excelled in the most like history and literature no that was my thing Mm-mm. i was Mm-mm. always a writer though give me the numbers two plus two is four all the time yeah. <laughs> i don't want to read that paragraph and answer them questions i don't know what john did i love to hear about I don't, the, the robert e lee's and all of the things no <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, not Robert E. Lee. That I'm man. Saying, I'm I'm not doing it. I love his. I almost changed my major to history because I had a, such a great history professor. I swear, I love. No, I you love, really do love. You love history and stuff like I can't get. I do. Lie. I look some things that I when I see it somewhere I always get so angry because I'm like they don't even know where they came from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do know that we got 50 states, and um, I know most of the capitals for all of the states. I do know that it's seven continents, and you know, stuff like that. That's geography. <laughs> oh, one in the see what I'm saying? <laughs> this is why this is why I, I my my career consists of concealer and blush. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't have nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all well i had fun i i think i we did good with our this 90 minute uh time so hopefully by the time y'all hear this we have a good president or at least a better yeah. president <laughs> and, and that we are safe and sound in our homes with a positive future for um post covid so all right y'all thank you so much for listening to the 96th episode of od podcast um just stay tuned for our 100th episode we got some really cool stuff coming up and uh you better like it okay <laughs> Here it's. All right, y'all. Have a good evening. All righty. Bye. Bye.